Simon from the Ski Exchange. Today's video is not just about tuning skis, it's kind of more of a project. So what we have here is the S9000 to keep from Salomon. This was the first ski that Salomon launched back in 1990. Very, very long, very, very skinny, and it really revolutionized skis during the 1990s. The first thing with this ski is its construction. It used what we call the monocoque cap. Uh, the monocoque is basically a top that wraps all the way around the skis. Up until the early 90s, all skis came constructed like this. So we have a top sheet and a separate sidewall and quite a, a chunky block graphic put onto the skis. In the early 90s, Salomon introduced the monocoque. They weren't the only brand using this sort of system. Fisher had the CAD skis, Vocal had the VP19, but Salomon really integrated their graphics. So thinking back 30 years ago, when I was a young teenager, seeing this on the shelf compared to this, it really, really looked awesome. So the monocoque cap wrapped all the way around, it tapered as you went up, and the whole point of the monocoque is that it's a load bearing structure, so really helped get energy out onto the edges. It came in three versions. The 1S, like this one, which is a giant slalom ski, which is marked at the top there. The 3S, which was slalom, and the 2S, which was all mountain. You know, back then, this was a not particularly uh, wide ski. This was like an all mountain type ski um, compared to what we have nowadays. As the 90s progressed, Salomon expanded their range and really famously started to bring out some really funky graphics. So particularly the Force Ranger skis here, we have the Force 9 3S, and then my particular favorite, the Super Force. So yeah, before this, there was no real graphics apart from brand names, but actually having like a wet look graphic was, was really unique. And you see that influence in modern skis nowadays. Uh, Salomon obviously went from strength to strength. Um, and in the early 2000s, they bought out probably the, the most legendary ski, the um, X-Screen. Uh, they pioneered twin tip skis with the 1080 and the Pocket Rocket. Uh, things have changed slightly nowadays. The irony is that when we, this was launched, it was revolutionary with the cap. And if we pull out a ski from this year, so 2020 to 2022, we have here from Head, the skis, and certainly the premium skis, have reverted back to the top sheet and the separate sidewall, giving the ski a bit more strength underfoot. Um, and the cap style is now more in the intermediate end of the market rather than at the advanced. So today, I've got a pair of these 30 odd year old skis. Now, normally on YouTube videos, you see lots of race skis being hand tuned and uh, you know, really, really good quality skis that are in very, very condition. Today, we've got an absolute trashed pair of skis. These are absolutely covered in rust. They're gonna need loads and loads of work. So today, I'm gonna to be quite aggressive in the way I service it just to get the edges back, but it's gonna be a good fun project and uh, let's get started. So now we're gonna have a closer look at the skis. So let's flip them over and we can see what we're dealing with. Salomon, like a lot of the other brands, started using center grooves. So this was, again, the norm in skis from the 50s onwards. Um, it really faded out in the 90s. And as all you ski technicians out there know, these are an absolute nightmare because if you get a gouge going through the base and through the center groove, it means a, a lot of extra work. So looking at the ski here, we've got loads and loads of surface rust. We've got quite a few gouges. Um, we haven't really got any visible edge damage, but until we clear most of this rust off, I'm not going to know for sure. Um, so yeah, it's gonna to have to be quite brutal to get the worst of this pitted rust off, off the base edge and then off the side edge as well. And then we need to really redress this base because it, it could have been 10 years since this has had any wax on it. So it needs a really, really good clean up. A um, couple other things. So the, the construction of this base is what we call speckled base. So it was two different types of um, sintered plastic, which was to help release wax. And then at the tail here, we have this emblem. So this is F4. So when you bought the skis, um, Salomon partnered with Swix Wax and they came with a sachet of um, paste wax that used to apply to the skis and they did that on all their skis for, for a number of okay, years. So the first thing I do is gonna try and get rid of some of this really bad rust before we get started. So I've got an old piece of um, sanding belt here and a metal scraper just to give me a, a flattish surface and some water just to spray on the ski. And we're gonna try and take some of this off before we start working heavily on the ski. So I'm gonna start from the top. While I'm doing this, I'm also looking for any potential delaminations. This is the, my biggest concern, is that because these have been rusty for so long, it may be that it's caused a delam on the base or more likely on the sidewall. If that happens, then that's just another job that we can do, but we'll see how we go. So I'm just literally going backwards and forwards. And this is just to take this thick, proud wax off the base before we start using any of my expensive machinery or any of my nice shiny tools. So we've 
Given that I could rub over and we started to see some metal coming through, this is all the, the rusty grime that's come off the base. Now I'm gonna do is gonna flip the ski onto its side. I'm gonna have a look at the side edge. So we lock this in place. It looks terrible, but so far I can't see any D-lamb, so let me get started. So now I've done the base, I'm gonna look at the side angle. Even though we're nowhere near finished um, the angle tuning, I'm gonna try and keep things as close to 90 degrees as possible. And then when we get to the end, I'll put a base edge bevel and a side edge bevel. So I'm gonna use a little guide here, again, just with this um, sanding paper, just over the top here. Okay, so I've got the real worst of the, the rust off the base edge and the side edge. I can't see any delamination, so that's good. So what I'm gonna do now is run it over my machine. Uh, this is a well-used belt. It's not certainly not a brand new belt. So I'm gonna just try and get a nice true edge on the base. Then we're gonna have a look at doing some base repairs. So we've got most of the um, ski flattened now. Um, I've just given it a good clean up and I've also gone over and enlarged any gouges. Um, this video is not really a, a how-to. Um, I'm gonna do another video on how to tune, but basically if you come down here, you can see some of the gouges that I've, I've cleaned up now. So these need repairing. So we've got some here, got some over here. Um, you've still got bits and bobs of rust on the skis as well. Got a few more damaged bits here and we've got quite a nasty one on the edge just up here as well. So I'm gonna go over now and start doing some repairs. So when we repair, we use a, a material called PTEC. So it's not wax, it's actually plastic that we're gonna extrude onto the bottom of the ski. So we're gonna do that next. So this is our Winter Steiger basement. Um, we use this for base repair. What we have is PTEC here, it feeds in and then it comes through uh, an iron at the bottom here. And then for other types of ski, we have a polyman and that's for, for clear base material. So today we're gonna to use the black. So I pull the trigger and it starts to ooze through. Now this type of repair is much, much stronger than what you may have seen with PTEX candles. You get a lot of soot with this, it melts it straight in. So I'm just gonna pop this just over the top of a repair, feed it through, look for another one, feed it through. And then obviously, I'm gonna to have to come back and take the excess off in a moment once it's all cooled down. And I'll just keep continue doing that down the length of the ski, finding all the gouges. So back in the day when we had the center grooves, you know, if we had a gouge going right through, we'd have to make the repair, then come back and chisel and cut and re-cut um, the center groove, which was an absolute pain in the neck. So I'm gonna continue with this one and the next ski, and then I'll show you how I file it. See you in a sec. So we've got most of the base repaired now. Um, next, we're gonna try and remove the excess. Now, if you've seen lots of videos on ski repair, you would have seen the candle uh, repair where you set light to a candle and drip it in. Um, because we use the extruding gun, it creates a much better bond and also scraping the excess material off. A metal scraper like this is just not mad enough for the job. So we use the milled file, um, very, very sharp. So I've got my gloves on. Um, I put the file on top of the base flat and put my hand on here just to help guide it. And I use this hand to produce all the effort. So I'm just gonna go down there and just gonna go light, overlapping the slides like this. Not a huge amount of downward pressure. This is gonna take the excess material off, but also it's gonna be tuning some more of this underside edge because there's still quite a lot of rust and damage on the edge. So I'm not putting a huge amount of pressure down, letting the file do most of the work. And because we've got this speckled base, we'll start to see that start to vanish quite soon, so I'm going to try and go for this now. Okay, so I've got most of the excess material off. You can see we've got quite large repairs here, but we have material in the center groove. So this is blocking this groove down here. So I'm going to try and recut this. This is something I've not done for probably 25 years. So I'm going to use a very sharp chisel and just slowly go up the groove and get underneath the repair and you can see it's just starting to lift. And there's always a couple of little stubborn bits. And then I'm just gonna come back down with some paper and just pop that into the groove and I can feel if there's any excess material. Let me just take a little bit more out there. And then we do that along the length of the ski where there's any repairs. A lot of the other brands that used the center grooves, certainly in the 90s, uh, like Vocal and Fisher, it was about 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter wide groove. So we'd have 10 millimeter wide files. So it was quite easy to use, um, but quite easy to cut out. We'd get like a Stanley knife and a straight edge and cut down 
either side of the groove and these are really sharp file to go through the middle and then we also had a a, a um, machine from recutting center grooves but it's terrifying machine to use because if you're a millimeter out it would just go right through the base so we tended not to use that at all so i'm going to cut out the rest of this and then we're ready for the next stage okay so the base has now been repaired uh what we're going to start doing is doing some fine tuning on the edges uh so i thought i'd bring out a couple of things to show you guys um, how we can tune edges by hand. Uh, first of all, we have the universal tool. Uh, this has got many different angles set and we have a file there and some little casters to run on. Or we have this system here where we have to buy different right angles or slightly off, off uh, right angle to adjust that. One of the biggest problems we get when people do tune their own skis is they take way too much material off. So real simple thing to invest in is a sh like a Sharpie pen. And when you do any work on the edge, just put a few little marks on there once the ink is gone, that's it. You don't need to go any sharper. Um, so I'm going to just demonstrate with this tool to start with. Also, protect your hands because uh, the edges can be very sharp. So I'm going to go in overlapping motions. And we're just going to take just enough material off. Not a huge amount of pressure is needed. And you can feel and hear when we get rid of all these burrs. Obviously, we've used the sanding machine. Um, that, that's got rid of the worst of it. I'm just going to move over to the, the file version now. And again, we're just going to go overlapping file. There's quite a lot of iron filings that come off. So every so often, you just want to wipe the ski. Try not to push the, uh, the iron filings into the base of the ski because it makes it really difficult to wax. So we keep overlapping all the way through. So we contacted Salomon to ask what edge angles um, would set these on. And no one seemed to be too sure. So what I'm going to do is um, one degree on the side and then I'm going to do a half a degree base edge bevel, bevel underneath that, which I'll show you in a moment. So we're going overlapping all the way here. All the rust has now gone from this outside edge. There may be a little bit on the base edge. I'm not too concerned about that. And now I can feel a nice sharp edge. There's a little bit of a burr, which I'll take off in a moment. But to start with, that's not bad. Now onto the other side. Okay, final stage of the edge prep is the base edge. So sidewall's been done, now the base edge. A um, couple of tools we can use for this. Uh, this is an adjustable one. So I'm gonna go with a half a degree uh, base edge bevel. So this is adjustable here, or I like to use, particularly on nice skis, uh, these guys is here. So this is done a half a degree, one degree, and I've got in-betweens as well. Um, like the side edge, um, if you're not confident in doing this, then a little felt pen makes a big, big difference. So I'm just gonna get and pop a couple little marks on here, just for guides. And then this goes onto the ski. Get everything lined up nicely. And then again, overlapping runs. Again, I can feel where it's taking the material off. And once you've done one side, you flip the ski and do the other side. Because this is such a long ski, I'm having to support it because normally we don't have skis over two meters in for servicing. So it's a little bit cack handed, but I'm sure you're getting the idea. But again, very little downward pressure. You just don't need to go crazy. And then again, ideally you should be wearing a glove because if you slip, you can cut yourself. But I'll sacrifice myself for you guys, don't worry. The final stage before we start doing base structure is taking off any hanging burrs along the edge. So I've got a couple of tools here. So a diamond file and Arkenstone. The edge angle is now set. So uh, with a fine diamond like this and plenty of water, I'm just gonna go along the length and pick up any hanging burrs. Um, if you're not confident using one of these, you can use the edge guides that we were using earlier on. But basically we just go along the top edge, repeat that on the other side, and then along the base, just to pick up any protruding bits of edge. And then we're ready for stone grinding. Okay, now for stone grinding. Base is now all prepped. Um, we've taken off a huge amount of material uh, because of all the rust. Uh, so the next stage I'm gonna use is a corking belt. This is gonna try and clear any remaining iron filings, if there are any, left in the base and give us a nice running finish before we wax. These now have been serviced, the edges are sharp, the base is flat, the base is structured, um, everything's been deburred, the base is clean, so we're ready for waxing. So because I've done so much work on the base, uh, first thing I'm going to do, 
to use is a base prep. So I'm gonna use this first of all, it's exactly the same way um, as I would wax a ski. So I'm gonna put a layer of this on and then I'm gonna wax the skis and then we'll see how they turn because out. Because I've been so aggressive with the sanding, there's no base, uh, wax lift to this base. Any uh, wax lift there would have been, has probably not been skied on for 20, 30 years. So I'm gonna get a good load of this in and then scrape the excess off and then hot wax on top. So we'll see how it looks in a second. So I've scraped the base prep um, off the ski. Now I'm gonna use uh, molybdenum wax. This will work particularly well with this older style of base. Um, this stuff is, uh, is plant-based rather than petroleum-based as well. So we're trying this out for the first time. So molybdenum wax, we put it on quite hot, uh, 110 Celsius. Gonna dribble it on and then iron it in. The base prep, will give us a really good base to start off with so we get much better absorption. And then finally, we'll scrape it all off at the end and see how they turn out. Molybdenum wax is black, so when I scrape it, you'll actually see how much wax we really do take off when we wax the skis. Wax is now cooled, time to scrape the excess off. Top of the ski's now scraped. I'm gonna try and clear the wax out of the center groove. I've not tried this for about 25 years, so bear with me. So far, so good. Oh yeah, you don't lose it, I tell you. Where's the end? There we go. One clear center groove. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm gonna do a few more of these over the next few months. Um, has anybody got any idea the turn radius of this ski or how wide it is underfoot? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot, bye.